to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education, and I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, we will be discussing a pharmacology case studies. Case studies are phenomenal because they help give you a real picture scenario, and they teach you key points in an interesting manner. It's more fun than reading the textbook. All right, let's get started. But first, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Let's go. A 43-year-old male presents to the hospital for new onset swelling of his lips. The condition began suddenly and is progressing rapidly. He states, My voice is hoarse and my throat is tight. He denies shortness of breath. His past medical history includes seasonal allergies and hypertension. Medications include cetirizine 10 mg and benazepril 5 mg. What is the cause of the patient's symptoms? A. Is it hereditary angioedema? B. Contact dermatitis? C. Melkerson Rosenthal syndrome? Or D. Drug induced angioedema? I will give you a few minutes to think. Now, I want to teach you a test taking strategy. Usually, this will work. Sometimes they will make it harder for you by giving you a format where it's like, a and C will be similar and B and D will be similar. But notice how we have angioedema here and angioedema here. That already makes me think that perhaps the answer is going to be some kind of angioedema because they've given you two options. So now you have to differentiate between types of angioedema, right? So let's go back to the case study. We have a 43 year old male, okay? He's having swelling of the lips. It began suddenly and rapidly. Now, if you're thinking maybe it doesn't say anything about he got punched in the mouth, right? So this isn't due to some kind of trauma. It didn't say he got stung by a bee or anything like that. So this isn't some kind of allergic reaction to a bee sting. He also states that his voice is hoarse and his throat is tight, which makes you think this could potentially, this is an allergic kind of re this is an allergic type of reaction that could progress to anaphylaxis currently he denies shortness of breath so that's good a few other things to note here his past medical history includes seasonal allergies so he has a history of being allergic to things he has a hyperactive immune system where he he already suffers from allergies having allergies what having allergies is is your body overreacts to allergens he also has hypertension. So he's taking cetirizine, which is of 10 milligrams, which is Zyrtec. Zyrtec is an antihistamine. Does Zyrtec have any side effects where it could cause this kind of reaction? Azapril, five milligrams. Hmm, what's this? I will have the references to this case study in the comments. Um, I did modify it. I think I would have added that he was recently put on a new medication but maybe that would have been too easy for you. So remember, in nursing school, they don't give you all of the information. You have to pick the best option, the best choice. What do we know about benazepril? Okay, well, let's move forward and we will talk about this. Let's remember your endings. That's the other suggestion I have. When you're studying farm, remember your endings. It ends in pril. And what is pril? Well, if you're not sure, stay tuned. So what's going on here? Here's the explanation and the treatment. The answer, by the way, was D, drug-induced angioedema. And angioedema is being caused by the angiotensin converting enzyme ACE inhibitor, okay? Angioedema occurs in only about 0.1 to 0.7% of patients that are treated with ACE inhibitors. So it's a very rare side effect, but it's important to know because it can potentially be life-threatening. And remember, the NCLEX wants you to be safe practitioners, right? So you need to be able to identify life-threatening conditions, such as angioedema from ACE inhibitors. Angioedema manifests as deep dermal and subcutaneous swelling that typically affects the face and upper airway. Now, risk factors that make you more likely to get angioedema include being of black race, being a woman, 
individuals aged greater than 40 years. So our gentleman was 43, and um, so that is a risk factor. Anyone on immunosuppressive therapy and those with a history of drug-induced rash or seasonal allergies. So there you go. Our gentleman also had seasonal allergies. So seasonal allergies being greater than 40, that put him at increased risk of developing drug-induced angioedema. Treatment of ACE inhibitor-induced angioedema involves you immediately discontinue that drug, okay? You immediately DC. Yes, of course, you stop it and then you notify provider, but you don't want to give any more doses and you don't want the patient to take any more doses because every exposure to that could potentially escalate the allergic reaction to the point where now he is in anaphylaxis. Symptoms usually resolve within 24 to 72 hours. In mild cases, you could do supportive care and monitor their airway, right? In the presence of respiratory distress or signs of airway obstructing edema, so if it progresses to the point where they can't breathe anymore, they would need to go to the ICU and it would, and with the possibility of potentially being intubated, and being given mechanical ventilation. But that's in severe cases. Usually you just monitor them for 24 to 72 hours and you just provide supportive care and you're continuously monitoring them that the condition doesn't get worse. So let's go into some pharmacology for benazepril. Now, when I looked this up in the Davis drug guide, technically the pronunciation is benazepril, but tomato, tomato, right? Um, when I was being taught pharmacology in nursing school, my instructors would say lisinopril, and I looked that up also, and apparently it's lisinopril. So tomato, tomato, okay? Someone says lisinopril, lisinopril, you know it's the same thing. Someone says benazepril or benazepril, same thing, but technically the right way is benazepril. To me, that sounds a little funny, maybe because I've never said it that way. Now, remember your endings in pharmacology. Pril is... Pril means that it's an ACE inhibitor. What is the purpose of benazepril? It's to manage hypertension. What is the action of it? It is, it's an ACE inhibitor. So it blocks angiotensin converting enzyme. So angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors blocks the conversion of angiotensin one to the vasoconstrictor angiotensin two. By blocking this enzyme, angiotensin II is a potent vasoconstrictor. When you constrict something, you increase its pressure, right? Think of a hose that's this wide versus a hose that's this small, right? There's more pressure in the tighter, smaller hose. So by blocking that enzyme, you are not allowing the vasoconstriction in facts. And it now, this is an ACE mnemonic that I created, this one. This one was already made. What does ACE stand for? Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, right? That's why we say ACE inhibitor because it inhibits angiotensin converting enzyme. Now, how do you remember the side effects for ACE? This is what I came up with and I'm very proud of myself for this. Um, A stands for angio, E stands for edema. So angioedema, I place this arrow together so it flows together. And that's why I put this letter in red and this letter in red because they go together, but they're also a life-threatening side effect. So angioedema is a side effect of an ACE inhibitor. What's another side effect of an ACE inhibitor that is very frequently tested? It's the cough, the cough, the cough, the cough. I cannot tell you enough. You will see this on a nursing exam. You will, they will ask you about a cough. Patient presents with a dry, hacking cough, recently was put on metformin and lisinopril. What is your nursing intervention? You stop the medication and you notify the provider. Because this is also a very annoying symptom for the patient and it's not going to go away and it's not going to get better. So you don't tell the patient, oh, this is a side effect, just deal with it. What you tell the patient is, you're having a cough, oh, that must be awful. All right, well, we will discontinue that medication. You notify the provider, you let them know, and then the provider will DC the med. In the real world, does this happen? In the real wo world, will the provider discontinue the medication? I would like to think so. If that's the only medication they can take for some reason, um, there's real world and there's 
textbook world. In textbook world, a provider would discontinue the medication. In real world, who knows, maybe that provider doesn't think that the cough is that serious or that bad and they just tell them to deal with it. So just because you see it in real life doesn't mean that that's what the textbook answer says. The textbook answer says you stop med, notify provider, and they would switch this patient to something else. Thank you so much for watching. Now that you have learned about ACE inhibitors, I'm confident that you will get questions related to ACE inhibitors right on an exam.